great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Hey y'all, what's up? It's Rhonda Lynn with the Social Therapy Podcast, and we are back at it for another week. What's up? Y'all miss me? Anyways, this week we're talking about finding your voice and how the effects of childhood trauma and stress are affecting how you are handling things today, okay? But you already know before we get started, we got to give a shout out to our sponsor because they pay their bills around here, all right? So check out Motivated Coffee on Amazon, okay? The link is below this video. Get your 12-ounce bag of coffee delivered within two days with prime shipping, okay? All right. Now, before we get started... This week's episode is a little heavy, so we're going to turn up a little bit, just a little champagne, you know, you know, just lighten up the mood a little bit. All right, so let's get started. So I have my notes right here. So if you see me looking down, I want to make sure I don't miss anything while talking to you today, okay? So the first thing I want to mention is the fact that a lot of us use being busy or overworking as a coping mechanism to avoid dealing with our issues that we are currently experiencing. OK, can you relate to that? Have you ever just allowed yourself to get lost in the sauce of work? It's so distracting that you don't think about anything else. Right. And then when that's over, you have to find the next thing to do so you don't have to think about what's going on in your personal life. And even though you don't really realize that's what you're doing, that's what you're doing. So whatever it is that you're going through, right, or have gone through, always keep in mind that there is someone else who has gone through what you are experiencing and they conquered it. They won the battle. They made it. OK, and you can find comfort in the experiences of others. So don't feel bad about finding a mentor or someone who has a similar story than you. You know, listen, you might find an opportunity to help you process what it is that you're experiencing. Because let's just be honest, where did it start? Okay. A lot of us lost our voice at a very young age while being disciplined by our parents or our caregivers. We were not able to speak up. It was considered talking back. You know what I'm talking about. If you said or did the wrong thing, you got a whooping. And we all know people in our culture of a certain age got a whooping. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. They meant well. Okay. I don't, be I don't really believe that anyone's parents let me take that back because cps is around for a reason okay but for the most part most of our parents who disciplined us by giving us whippings it wasn't necessarily something that was meant to harm us or meant to be malicious they were really just doing what was done to them right they were really just doing um, what they how they were brought up and they figured like, you know what? I turned out OK, you know, and I want my kids to turn out OK. So this is how I'm going to raise my kids. I'm going to raise them the way that I was raised. Right. But really what it comes down to is they weren't OK and they passed their trauma on to you. And now here you are as an adult having to process everything. And you know what kills me about that? What kills me is that you get your voice taken away and then you become an adult and then you're supposed to act like you never lost. And you're supposed to be able to speak up and be able to communicate effectively and do all these things as if you've been practicing this at, throughout your whole life. Like you've been trained to know how to communicate your whole life when really you've been trained to be silent right when really you've been trained to hold it in to not express your opinions you know to know a child's place okay and especially if you are a young black girl then you are told you too loud you talk too much be quiet you are extra you're doing the most you're ghetto you're ratchet you know you are statistic OK, you are constantly being shut down and then you become an adult and it's like, oh, how come you don't tell people how you feel? You don't you never say you love me. Um, of course, I don't tell you. Of course, I don't. When was that ever? When was it ever OK to say it before now? Most of us don't even know how to tell somebody that we love them. Most of us don't even know how to express 
verbally how we care for someone, not even for our own children. And then they grow up lacking that emotional support that we lacked, okay? And the reason that we have children in the first place is so that we get an opportunity to do it better, okay? I don't understand how you can sit up here and you can have children and put them through the same things that you went through that you knew how it affected you. You know how it felt when you had when you went through it. So you want your kids to go through it? They gotta come up through the mud? No, they don't. Okay, it's already hard enough being a child and trying to even figure out who you are. And let's just be honest, half of these adults, okay, don't even know who they are. There are people well into their 50s, their 60s, still trying to figure it out because they never had the room to make mistakes when they were growing up. Now, tell me I'm wrong. Because you know I'm right, okay? You know I'm right, okay? So, let's just go over a couple of things on how you can know if you've lost your voice, okay? First of all, like I mentioned before, if you aren't able to verbally express love, you may have lost your voice, okay? If you aren't able to communicate effectively in any situation, you may have lost it, okay? And if you have a hard time expressing your thoughts, your ideas... You may have lost it. So let's talk about how this trauma that turns into stress in adulthood, right? I mean, stress in childhood too, but, you know, it's no longer childhood trauma at this point. It's stress, okay? You're constantly being triggered, okay? It's post-traumatic, whatever, right? So let's talk about um, how these experiences affect us as adults okay first of all um it impacts our emotional and mental well-being okay it affects our ability to connect and build healthy relationships um if you are having issues in any one of these areas this may be where it started i strongly suggest that you seek out a therapist okay someone with a similar background that can understand where you're coming from and the reason why i say that you should is because let me give you a prime example okay so you know a lot of us we you know we go through life we get, something happens right i mean it, life is not always peaches and cream and you know perfection and happiness and all this other stuff and a lot of times when we going through different experiences we you know we vent to our friends and our family and you know stuff like that and then, you know, the, the feedback they give us is from their perspective, right? And that's not always the best feedback to get. So I'm going to tell you a story real quick of something that happened to me a couple of weeks ago when I was at work. Okay. And if you know me already, you already know this story, but a lot of you don't know me. So I'm about to tell it. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago, I'm at work. I'm on my lunch break. Okay. I um got my airpods in i'm watching a video on youtube probably like a podcast or something like that and i've been trying to eat healthy because you know i work third shift so i don't like to eat real heavy at work so i have my little vegetables my little ranch dip and um when i say i was chowing down baby let me tell you okay i was grubbing okay i was getting down when all of a sudden this lady who's the same age as me you know um she walks up. Now, I've, I've seen her around before. I've been in a few group discussions with her um, leading up to this, but I don't even know her name. Like, I don't remember her name because she's not a person that I know, know like that. And I'm saying that because when this incident happened, people who know me was like, oh, I thought y'all knew each other. I thought she did that because y'all knew each other. No, we don't know. So basically, in a nutshell, what happened was, while I'm sitting up here engulfed in my food, engulfed in this video that I'm watching on YouTube, I see a hand coming down into my vegetables and she takes a carrot and eats it. And I look up like, what the heck? I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. I'm just stealing a carrot from you. Oh my God. <laughs> and walks away. Are you serious? Did this, <laughs> did this just happen to me? Did y'all don't understand how infuriating that was, especially when I had to throw my food away. 
I work in a warehouse, okay? I don't know where your hands have been. And even if you had just washed them, I still don't trust you. Not with my food that I'm actively eating, okay? So that's not even the worst of it. She comes back, okay? So she comes back a couple of hours later. I'm sitting, you know, within a group of people. We having a conversation. I got these chocolates on my desk that aren't even mine. They belong to somebody else that I took from them because it was having a allergic type of thing going on or whatever, right? And she comes and she goes to take one. I said, hey. I said, you can't have this. You can't have one. Stop. Put it back. Okay. All while I'm saying this, she literally has the chocolate, unwrapping it, looked me dead in the face, and ate it. Oh my gosh, I felt like I was going to pass out. I needed this so much. Excuse me? Did you not hear me? Did you completely just disregard me? Okay? Now, that's not the end of the story, but we're going to keep it going, right? So when she walks away, because it's like the, the vibe in the whole room is like, what the freak, right? When she walks away, of course, all my homegirls is like, oh my gosh, she came back. She disrespected you. I would never. If it was me, I would have had to beat her ASS. I would have had to put the paws on her, right? I would have had to beat her down. You know what I'm saying? I would have had to cuss her out. I would have been like, bitch. Is that the feedback that I need right now when I'm already sitting in my chair feeling like I am on fire with my hands balled up in my lap trying to control myself because I'm at work, people. I'm at work. I'm not on break. <laughs> I'm at my desk. Okay? Ain't no, this is not worth my job. But when I went home that night, it bothered me so much that I couldn't sleep. I called my mama the next day. My mom was like, oh, no, honey, you should have checked that right away. You know, and I should have. I just didn't know what I didn't know how to process what was happening because it's never happened to me before. So the next day I have an appointment with my therapist. Right. So I already told you how my friends and family reacted. Right. So let me tell you how the therapist reacted. The therapist listens to the story. You know, she's like, okay. And then she asked me, where did you feel the rage? What part of your body did it concentrate in? This is where your body processes stress, right? This is where your fight or flight goes, okay? This is what happens when you are feeling like you're being um, taken advantage of or how you feel this is where this is where it settles in and depending on where the stress settles in at this is where your stress period settles in at, and this is where you could have issues with your you know with pain or whatever right because after you go through so much stress and so much you know um that you know that feeling or whatever if your body can't handle it it starts to pass it out you know, to different parts and it, and it breaks down. Right. And so her response to me was, you know, let's dig into how you process this and why you shut down and why you didn't speak up and how you're going to address this issue when you go to work tomorrow in a way that makes you feel safe. OK. And this is why I say that you can't just have your friends and family giving you advice on how to handle things you need a therapist you need so basically you know after having that conversation i slept well yes i did i went to work the next day and i calmly called her over and in a very calm voice i checked her right i told her what she did that was wrong how it made me feel how she is to never, ever, ever, ever touch me or anything else of mine. And that she, if she think that she know me that way, she don't know me like that. You know, because I feel like if I don't say anything to her, then next thing you know, she's going to be going in my lunch bag. You know what I'm saying? She's going to be sitting in my chair. You know what I'm saying? She's going to just be in my stuff. How far is it before you say something? Right? And then how do you say it? It's all about the delivery. People be so quick to pop off.
You can get your message across without having to pop off, but still get your message across and let people know that you're serious and you don't play. So let's dig into this real quick. How did I possibly become the kind of person that doesn't just pop off, right? Probably because I can never pop off. I mean, I have when I was younger, right? But it was more of a stressful situation, you know, like with me being the oldest, nine times out of 10, if I got into a fight, it's because I have younger siblings, somebody was picking on them. So it's my job to protect them, right? But who's protecting me? Nobody. So I have to diffuse the situation because I know that although I got they back, I got mine, right? And everything ain't worth the fight. I learned that at a very young age. See, when you go through different types of trauma, what it does is it changes your DNA, right? It changes the way that your brain develops. And depending on how young you were when it happened, you were more affected by the development of your brain. So like what I learned when I was like in the child development classes, when I was getting my degree, is that, you know, up until about mm, the first three years, like the spongiest years of your life. Right. And then it's like as you get a little bit older, or like five, six, six years old or whatever, you're still creating synapses in your brain. Right. And the different experiences that you have create new synapses. But also, if you're experiencing trauma at that age, those synapses, those synapses <laughs> do not form properly. Okay, so think about a baby. They put everything in their mouth. They smell everything. They repeat everything that, that you say. They repeat everything that they do. They mock, right? That's how they learn how to speak, how to walk, how to talk. That's why your kids walk like their daddy, right? This stress affects how our hormones regulate our emotions, okay? It also affects our immune system, right? It affects how our body heals itself. And this is all stemming from stress. Now, stress leads to a lot of different health concerns, right? It's a national health crisis. OK, and I'm going to tell you some of the things that it can lead to. So like if you're having some of these issues and the doctor really can't quite figure out where it's coming from or what started it, this might be the culprit. OK. Now, don't get me wrong. Stress is not all bad. I mean, it's there for a reason. It's there to protect us, right? It initiates your fight or flight, right? It lets you know when you're in danger, right? It lets you know when you're unsafe and to prepare yourself to defend yourself. But the problem is when you're in this state of danger, for a prolonged amount of time, that's when the scale starts to be tipped into the direction of being unhealthy. So now you're probably saying, all right, Rhonda, how we fix this, right? Can this be fixed? Can it be offset? Yes, it can. It can be offset. You can offset this by establishing a caring and loving relationship, right? If you have parents who are caring and loving and are willing to work through some of the traumas with you and explain your past to you, and maybe some of the things that they were going through to help you understand why they behaved and made the decisions that they made in their life, that can help you process your childhood and understand why things were happening so you don't internalize the experiences as being something at your own fault or something that you could have prevented in some kind of way, right? 
or you can have a partner, a spouse, who is a caring and loving person who is patient with you and willing to help you process. Having someone in your life that shows you love, like genuine love, showing you that they care genuinely without a, um, you know, without an, a selfish gain for it can help you, can help you uh, offset the stress that you have because it's not permanent, right? Um, when you, when you hug someone, when you kiss someone, when you embrace someone, it releases hormones that helps calm down your system. It helps you reset your system, right? And kind of like pushes out the stress that you're going through. Once you are at a point where you feel like you are in a safe environment, like you feel like, okay, I'm in a safe relationship. I'm in a safe space, a safe place where my traumas my issues my whatever is not going to be you know turned around on me because let's just be honest right there are people out here who will take the time to get to know you very intimately and then when you are vulnerable or they are losing the situation with you or they feel like they are losing the power that's when they dig into their bag and pull out your trauma and throw it in your face and then it takes you all the way back and you regress and now you got to start all over. Make sure you're not in one of them kind of situations. If you are, leave. Those people don't change. They don't get better. Okay? Now, after you done got out of that situation, hopefully you're not even in that situation. Okay? You have to take the initiative to heal. Okay? You have to take the initiative to heal spiritually, emotionally, and physically okay i'm talking about prayer meditation working out doing shadow work or whatever it is that you need to do to get into a better space mentally physically emotionally as far as your health you want to be here for a long time okay because see the thing is many of us adults are still continuing to experience our childhood traumas whether it be romantically or professionally these jobs sometimes are traumatic and they can trigger you without they don't even really realize it and you got to be able to handle and process your stress before you blow up at your work so i'm just going to give you a couple of ideas or a couple of examples of how you know that you're experiencing trauma as an adult right if you're in a situation where you cry right you're emotional right you're feeling down and it's like nobody cares. You're sick and nobody cares. Nobody checks on you. How do you feel? Right? Um, when you need help and nobody responds, how do you feel? Right? Unpack. Unpack this. Right? Um, when you set a boundary... Like I did with old girl when I told her, no, stop, you can't have this. What are you doing? Put it back. And she didn't. And my boundaries were disregarded. And I had to address that because I literally could not sleep and it bothered me that much. Once I addressed it, I was good. Now, the next step into offsetting this trauma and uh, freeing yourself of this pain that you've been carrying around with you is to... Turn the pain into purpose, okay? Well, you can take your experiences and you can use it to help people or help yourself in some kind of way. That's how you give it a new name. It's how you give it a new purpose. It's no longer a part of your life to hold you down. Now you're using it to lift you up. And once you take something like that and repurpose it and repackage it and give it a new purpose, guess what? You have canceled out the trauma. It's no longer associated with a negative experience. So you might be wondering, like, how do I do that? <laughs> well, the first thing you got to do is you have to acknowledge the situation you have to acknowledge the pain you have to acknowledge that it exists you have to reach down into your bag of bones and pull out a bone and look at it 
Okay, you have to acknowledge that it is there. Okay, because what you and then allow that experience to give you strength. Okay, because this strength gives us power. Okay, All, our power is in our vulnerabilities because we're repurposing it. Right. Nobody knows your story better than you. So basically what you want to do is you want to take this pain, these experiences, and you want to use it as an empathy builder for yourself and others, okay? And then the empathy and the connections that you're able to make will lead you into your purpose. You might start thinking like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And this is how I'm going to help people. Or this is how I'm going to, you know, recover and repurpose this. And then as you get into doing it, you start realizing that it's taking you into another direction that is more of your purpose. Sometimes we go through things to help us grow into who we're supposed to be. And I'm not saying that God puts us through anything because last time I checked, he loved us, right? But the fact that we have free will is what allows us to be in these situations. We make these decisions, okay? We, at the time that we make these decisions, we believe that we are doing what's best for us based off of the knowledge that we have in the moment, okay? So when you end up in a bad situation or you like, dang, that was a bad decision, Right. If I'd have known then what I know now, I wouldn't have done it. But you didn't know what you know now. And based off of the limited amount of information that you had at the time, you really believe that you was doing what was best for you. Because who purposely makes bad decisions for themselves to put themselves in harm's way? Nobody. Nobody does that. OK, if they do, they got uh, they got other issues. OK. So you really can't go that hard on yourself for being in a bad situation or, or making a bad decision because at the time that you made the decision, you thought it was the right thing. And that's why I'm saying like you got to learn from these experiences so that you don't keep making the same bad decision over and over. Now, if you're still making the same decisions over and over, then maybe you are hurting yourself. Okay. If you know the red flags... And you keep ignoring them, you might be hurting yourself and you might want to get that checked out. Okay? If you notice that you keep dating the same person over and over, just a different face, you don't see nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, before you, if you, if you, <laughs> If you are doing this, right, if you are dating the same person over and over, if you keep finding yourself in the same type of situations, the same type of relationships, the same type of working conditions, you may want to deal with a few things, be single for a while, learn a new trade, get a certificate, switch careers, you may want to make a significant change in your life to remove yourself from being even in the company of people that you have, are currently attracting. Level up. Okay? Level up. Become better so you can do better, so you can have better. Okay? And take your time. It's not a competition. It's no rush. This is not a game. So many people get into something so quick without addressing their issues that they end up bringing people into their lives, into their mess, okay? And then every time something goes on that they can't handle, they using the person in their life, whether it be their significant other or their children or their family members or their subordinates at work as an emotional punching bag. You don't want to be the person who is using people as an emotional punching bag. Deal with yourself. Deal with your issues. Okay. You know, I never understood how 
someone could justify putting somebody through something that they didn't went through just because they feel like they okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're not okay. If you are hurting other people, if you are constantly popping off, right? You got a bad temper. You drink too much. You know what I'm saying? Everything offends you. Everything heightens your level of stress. You got a lot of unpacking to do. You need to get somebody to talk to because you are passing your trauma on to other people and the cycle just never stops. Now, when this person leaves you, they doing what you was doing to somebody. It's not okay. It's not. At the end of the day, though, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. The reason why I'm even able to talk to you about these things is because of one of my own experiences. Two, because I read a lot of books. I'm not saying I'm an expert at all because I'm not, <laughs> okay? But I do take the time to try to figure out how to become a better person, how to deal with certain things that I've experienced, right? I read, I have conversations, I have a therapist, I have a mentor, I have people that I trust to have conversations with who I know based off of where they are at in their lives, that the information that they're going to give me or the advice they're going to pass on to me is something that I can actually hold as being a valuable conversation that I can get something from and I can feel like this person is telling me this because it is effective they ain't hating on me because I, I mean look at the end of the day I'm gonna just put it like this okay I love myself okay I like who I am okay and everything that I've been through is what made me the person that I am today, okay? Now, don't get me wrong, because I would not go through it again, no. But if I already went through it, it's a part of me now, right? That's who, it's part of who I am, okay? Everything that has happened to me has happened for me, okay? And now I'm able to use it as something meaningful for my life that I'm curating for myself. Okay, it's what allows me to sit here and talk to y'all about these type of things because it happened for me and I'm repurposing those feelings into something purposeful. And this is something that I absolutely encourage anyone who is listening to this podcast to do as well. Okay, if you're dealing with something, find a way to repurpose it and, and make it mean something, right? Give it a new meaning for yourself so you can move on and become a better person <laughs> all right you guys thank you for tuning in please make sure that you like this video okay and follow this podcast and if you know somebody who could benefit from this message make sure you share the link with them okay and we are on tiktok facebook instagram Make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms. You can stay up to date on what's going on. And if you got a subject you would like to hear me talk about, or if you would like to be a guest on here, let's do it. Okay. But until next week, peace. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great.